At ACFCS, we like to highlight people who are thought leaders in the industry and bring a unique perspective to tackling financial crime across the spectrum. In today's Financial Crime Compliance Spotlight, we're lucky enough to talk to Craig Hirsch, who is an AML specialist and examiner with the U.S. Treasury's Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Craig, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Brian. So a lot of people, I'm sure, compliance professionals would love to be able to see the world through your eyes. I mean, you get to see across banks, see trends, but I'm also curious, you know, what motivated you originally to get into the AML field? And it, it's a question that probably a lot of people don't know about me. Um, and when I started my career, I didn't just jump into the AML space in the AML sector. Um, it actually started when I was a junior and senior in college oh, wow. um, in Manhattan, in New York. And that was the time when the Enron frauds were occurring, oh, wow. the WorldCom frauds mm -hmm. were taking place, um, the demise of Arthur Anderson happened. Um, and then, record frauds. Uh, rec yeah. rec record frauds. And, and at that time, there was another event right around those same years, um, that another event that completely changed the landscape of what we have today, uh, an event called 9-11 happened. Oh, yes. I was in Manhattan when that happened and majoring in accounting. And when that took place with all of those frauds, and I'm majoring in accounting, I'm thinking to myself, am I going to become a regular accountant wonderful there's wonderful people and it's a <laughs> great profession that people who do it or could i use my skills to really make a tangible difference with oh, forensic yeah, accounting absolutely. and at the time i didn't know the terms bsa aml <laughs> um but that really would be a passion that where i felt that i could use the skills that i'm learning in school to make a tangible difference in society so that was that played a big role in my motivation to go into this wow that's that's phenomenal and just as a journalist i remember that day as well i was in melbourne florida and it was, it was an event really that shocked the world because there was a, a military base near there and all the, everyone wondered what is going to get hit next? Are we going to get hit next? And you also hear all inspiring stories of people who joined the military because they were so passionate about doing something. And absolutely, an AML examiner, you are on the front lines fighting financial crime. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, like how did you hear about you know, getting into the, because there's different ways you can do this. Uh, of this piece of the puzzle, there's, like I mentioned before, you know, there's uh, AML compliance officer, there's auditor, there's law enforcement, there's examiner. What made you decide to pick going with the OCC? Well, actually, I started my career as a mainstream auditor in financial okay. statements. And where I had that passion to do forensic accounting, um, a lot of mentors of mine told me at the time, they said, Craig, they said, y you know, before you know how to find what's wrong, you have to know what it looks like when it's right. Absolutely. So they said, we highly suggest you go in and you become a financial statement auditor and know what the financial statements are supposed to look like when it's right. And I did that. I became a CPA and I did my traditional two years in, in the audit world. Um, and, and it was very shortly thereafter that I expressed an interest in the consulting world ah. to do forensic accounting. And I was lucky enough to be part of a firm that had a forensic accounting division. And I did the financial crime investigations, the frauds, the oh, uh, financial statement frauds, the misappropriation of assets, the corruption investigations, and they were fun. They, 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 wow. they were great. And then one day I got a phone call in the firm and they said, we need help on an AML look back project. And ah, I, the old AML and independent and review and it, look back, remediation exactly, nation. <laughs> ex exactly. And I said, what's a look back? <laughs> Didn't know what it was. And we could probably say at that point, the rest is history. Because from that standpoint going forward, I realized the AML BSA space was something that I had a tremendous passion for. Oh, yeah. Because every case that I picked up during that look back was a different Cake, a different different criminal case, right. whether it was tax evasion or human trafficking or arms dealing or terrorist financing, any one of these cases, narcotics. I mean, it was fascinating. And so I said, this is an area that I want to specialize my career. So I did the consulting world for almost a decade, about nine years I did consulting. And then afterwards, I had an opportunity at the OCC, which I came to and just absolutely, absolutely love. No, that's that's fantastic. And, and I can just completely agree and understand. You know, when I first got into this field, there were so many letters, I didn't even know how to spell AML. If you gave me the A and the L. And I was like, completely overwhelmed. I remember my first story was a guidance piece from some FinCEN document, and I was like, uh, this is guidance? I can't read this? This is incredibly different. But then after a while, it really gets under your skin to kind of learn this and share knowledge. And yeah, it's absolutely amazing. So tell me a little bit about what you do in your current role. 
So I don't have a typical day in the life of an examiner. Most people think there that is, was my a, next question. There is a, <laughs> a typical day. There really is none, especially when you specialize in BSA AML. My, my normal job, my every day-to-day -day job, if you will, is as a bank examiner, where I will go on a scheduled exam to a bank, we'll go in, and we will review their BSA AML program. Of course, we will evaluate the four pillars. We'll look at the OFAC program. Most importantly, in this job, if you will, the most important thing is recognizing the risk profile mm -hmm. of the bank and then making sure that the bank has the appropriate controls to manage that Absolutely. risk. And manage and mitigate, absolutely. And, and so that's why there's no one-size-fits-all exam. Mm -hmm. there's no, there are no two exams that are identical or the same. There's no cookie-cutter exams. Yes, we have procedures that we have to follow. Yes, there are steps that we have to go through. Um, but the average exam can vary depending on what the risks are to that, to that institution. Now, in addition to my day job, so to speak, of the everyday going you know, on, on the different exams, um, there's other things that we do, especially as BSA specialists, my colleagues and I, we do training. We do a lot of training. Oh, that's very important. Both internally at the OCC and then also externally. We do a lot of outreach events. Um, and Capacity I building, I'm sure, as well in other countries. I've it, seen that. Yes, yes, we, we, we've done that as well. Um, and, and I love doing the outreach events um, because it, we're, we're all on the same team. We're all trying to fight financial crime. Yep. And if there are insights that, that we can share and risks, emerging risks that mm -hmm, we can mm -hmm. talk about and, and, and have everybody contribute in a think tank type setting, right, right. I'm all for that. And I, and, and I think it's a great opportunity to have that collaboration um, because as a regulator, believe it or not, we're not here to play the gotcha game. <laughs> we're not. You have no idea how many banks are seeing this and going, yes, yes, but he the, said it. it. I believe it we, now. No. <laughs> we are not here to play the gotcha game. We're there to make sure that the, that the programs are operating in a safe and sound manner. And if we can share with the banks other emerging risks and again, those controls that can manage them before we get into the institution and the institution you know, implies it and implements it, there's nothing that would make us happier to see that. No, that's fantastic. And, and really now there's so many different technologies that banks are playing with, innovation, AI. You know, it, it seems to me so many people talk about AML um, you know, as cost center, things like that, but it seems to me the future is really bright in terms of efficiency, effectiveness, of better going after and stopping these bad guys. So obviously, you know, your job is extremely important, um, but really what is the most rewarding part of your job? The most rewarding part of my job is actually seeing the remediation of a BSA program. Oh, okay. A lot of people think that the most rewarding part of our job <laughs> is finding the problems. <laughs> <laughs> and coming down with a really big stick right, right now. No, no. <laughs> believe it or not, for this examiner sitting here, that is not what I take satisfaction in. I take satisfaction in after the issues have already been identified, whether I'm the one to find them or not, it's going through that remediation process and I'm going to tell you why. Once the bank has remediated its BSA program and has fixed the whole, that means that society as a whole is safer. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That means that the bad guys have one less outlet that they're able to move that money. And so for that to be able to be accomplished is a real victory. And that's a real win in our world because the banks are operating in a safe and sound manner, protecting the integrity of the financial system. and legitimately protecting all of us as a society. So when it's remediated, I'm thrilled because there's no more issues that are going to be popping up and presenting themselves in that particular area. Well, you're basically turning what could have potentially been, you know, a, a conduit for dirty money into now an ally in the fight against it. Exactly. So that's very powerful. So exactly. But obviously, you know, and I love hearing how people kind of got into the field of AML because they're so many and varied. Most people don't say, oh, I was a little kid and I was like, I was watching cartoons and I just, I want to be an AML examiner. And their parents said, we're so proud of you, Timmy. <laughs> no, that, that didn't happen. But, you know, some people get in, they heard of it in college. Some people work at a bank and they, they just kept hearing these words AML and they, they got intrigued because they like, again, the fight against financial crime. That can be a passion that really gets under your skin, gets into your bones. Some people like you, they went the audit route. They've learned, you know, audit is great because that's the connection of like what the regulators what, what the bank did wrong, and how to remediate those programs. So it's a very sometimes unique skill set to get into this. So what would you say are the most important attributes for someone in your role to really be able to succeed? You definitely have to be organized. 
you definitely have to have the knowledge and the skill set and to have that yearning for information. You have to be on your toes because, as you said, the bad guys are always changing. <laughs> the cat and mouse game. Cat and mouse game is <laughs> yeah. always there. So you've got to be aware of all of the, the schemes that are happening and how you can manage those risks and, and emerging, all of that. But I would actually say the most important quality in this field is the desire and the passion to make a difference. Because when a person actually has that passion and that desire to really help society in that capacity and the integrity of the financial system, everything else is commentary. Everything else lines up itself up. If you've got that passion, you're gonna get the skills. If you've got that passion, you're gonna make yourself organized. Oh, absolutely. So when you have that passion and you've got that, that desire to really help fight the good fight, um, that, that really triggers everything else. I think that's the most important quality in the work that we do. Oh, absolutely. When you have that passion, it's not a job. It's, it's not a job, it's an adventure. But no, but really, it's, it's not a job. It's, it's a passion. It's something that you continually want to improve yourself because you're right. You know, whatever the good guys do, the bad guys, adapt to it mm -hmm. so it's a constant game of, of kind of learning adjusting you know being uh, you know thinking on your feet if yeah. you will so and the great thing is you know you have how many years have you done this by the way well I've uh, I, I've been in the OCC for about seven years and prior to that I was in the consulting world for uh, about nine years that includes oh, my wow. auditing and forensic accounting and so AML this is more than a decade of uh, oh absolutely uh, yeah, just, just getting that brain of yours. Finan financial crime. And, and again, my background uh, in the consulting world traveled through being a traditional CPA, financial mm -hmm. statement mm -hmm. audit, through the CFE world mm -hmm. of the certified fraud examiner of doing the financial crimes and the frauds in, in, in that world, and then into the AML world. So it's that hybrid of the auditor, forensic oh, accounting, absolutely. DSA technical knowledge, and you put it all together. And that really describes my job at the OCC very well. It's a combination of audit, forensic investigative work, and knowledge of technical DSA AML laws. No, and, and we're really seeing that that is a very rare skill set, but one that's very in demand because, uh, you know, we talk to a lot of compliance professionals and they're also trying to kind of engage in the mission of ACFCS, which is, you know, convergent holistic approach, you know, yeah. cross train these teams, have it so that, you know, the AML guy, the corruption guy, the fraud guy, the cyber guy, they can all speak to each other. They can all kind of tackle problems together which is, it's, it's, it's a very powerful paradigm and kind of breaking what has been done before the siloed approach. So, you know, obviously with what you've done, the unique skill set, the very interesting and cool way that you've kind of gotten into this, there's a lot of sure lessons you've learned and I'd love if you could share some of those. So what advice or lessons would you like to impart on a financial crime professional just entering the field, either as an examiner, a compliance officer, or even maybe law enforcement. Those lessons would be very applicable to them as well. Yeah, there, there's probably a lot of lessons to be learned, um, but the one that I, I think that I would wanna share with people um, is, is that when they come up with ideas and they're paying attention to the news and they hear of the schemes that are taking place, whether it's human trafficking or narcotics, or, or, or anything, terrorist financing, any scheme that's emerging that they have an insight into and they've got a way and an idea of how to manage it, how to mitigate it, how to prevent it, how to identify it, implement those ideas. Bring them to your big, from the, from the industry side, bring them to your banks, implement them. If you're, you, if you're in the government side, bring them to the superiors. If you're in the industry, bring them to the government and have that collaboration. So the biggest lesson that I would want to impart on people is when you come up with your ideas of how to make BSA programs more mm -hmm. effective, more efficient, more productive, more meaningful, don't keep those ideas to yourself. Oh, yeah. Bring them out, collaborate, and let's work together to make it the most meaningful program that we can make it. And I'm sure collaboration also would like um, multiple banks can kind of collaborate as well and kind of learn from each other I'm imagining. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've seen that you know depending again on the risk profile and the geography and where they are um, we've seen a lot of banks collaborating together which is really an amazing thing to see. Well, Craig, this has been, at least for me, extremely enlightening, very fun. You've, again, just refilled my passion for this space, and uh, we really appreciate you being here, so thank you so much. But everyone, uh, we also appreciate you for watching, listening, and learning. So this is Brian Monroe, Vice President of Content at ACFCS. If you want more information on the association, please go to acfcs.org. Thanks again, everyone.